Hi everybody, I'm your host Demon and welcome to hell. Today we're going to be working on uh, cutting off some high pressure nipples and putting on a new coupler. Now these are socket weld connections so that's meaning an example. Here's the new ones that we'll be uh, replacing. So you have see how it has that inset. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting this weld off and extracting this pipe, putting her on the new one, holding it up, and uh, shipping it off, and they will do their hydro and x-ray and put it into use. And if you're wondering what, uh, how much pressure these things have, or this one in particular, these, this one here is uh, 5,000 PSI. And the real problem with it is that in between here, this gasket and that little lip, over a period of time, what's happened is this edge has washed away. So it's gouged in from the oil and gas and just pure pressure, right? So that's called cavitation. So these ends in here are washing out or cavitating. So that's why we have to cut this pipe off and throw her on. And then you're wondering, well, why didn't they put on everything new? That wasn't what I was asked to do. So I will build at the customer's request and it will be done. So come along and uh, see if you can learn something or show you something or just see how it's done. Thanks for watching. So here we are um, set up on my nice little automatic spool. Isn't that nice? Because uh, I like to do things fast, I'm using the cutting torch. And what I'm going to do is wash this weld out and then extract this pup. Because I would have liked to take this out of the valve for them, but I don't have I don't have the size of a pipe wrench or the torque to take these off or the time to bother. So I'll just do the exchange and they can send it in for testing and install themselves. So we'll just focus on the iron part. So. get rid of welds fast with a cutting torch. What's nice is to use an oxidizing flame. And it'll put the heat right into that weld right away. So here we go. That's the carburizing flame. And there's the neutral flame. And we're gonna set it to this. See how it's bright blue and pointed? This is this. This will cut that weld up real fast. This is used in uh, a lot of heavy oil. This is covered with uh, a heavy oil coating, like tar. So as this heats up, it's going to start smoking and emitting many gases, toxins, H2S. Whatever's in here is going to boil, and vaporize, and catch fire, and spit oil. 
it does a lot of really neat things. So just be conscious of that when you do it. When you cut it into well, especially in pipe or anything cone shape, you gotta kind of make you could have made a, a notch in it. Or you have to aim directly into the center. If you have a sharp edge on a circle, it's easier to start cutting because then you have something to heat up. The heat doesn't dissipate around the whole end and it's got a starting point. So as you saw, I would just go into the center here slightly and then wash it off. So, get back at it here. See that little bit of bare opening? If you put all your heat into the weld and to the scrap part and wash it in, this pipe won't get hot enough. So as soon as you see a slight bit of opening in it where your you know socket weld fitting is, you stop and go out. Even if you do gouge it a little bit, that doesn't really matter because we're going to clean this all up and our fillet is going to end up being the same size or a little bit bigger. So no worries, but I mean, you don't wanna to go too excessive, right? And remember, you still have about a half inch of that pipe in the fitting, so you're gonna have um, still a good fit. So don't worry about it too much. So now we'll continue to wash through, but keep an eye right on that space, because you'll notice as we cut again, I'll wash right up to it, and as soon as it has a bare open space, then we come across and we'll keep doing that. Oh, it's almost like bacon. Hear it bubbling, it's starting to smoke. The smell of noxious fumes. Let's see if we, let's see if it's flammable yet. And in the hole, fire in the hole. That was pretty lame. It's not quite ready yet.
So, I had to switch my bottles and I got tired of waiting uh, for cutting so I switched up to a number three tip. Um, I cleaned it out but what another good thing is if you want to really get a, um, a tip running clean it's uh, good to run it on wood and what that does is you'll notice it makes a lot of bangs you want it to go bang 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 and what that does is cause back pressure and it kind of shocks and cleans out any residue or any floating debris sometimes you get an iron filing in the tip and you got one little port that doesn't quite run right and it whistles or you know it's got more of a carbonizing flame than the others and it keeps wanting to pop out um, sometimes that works really good to uh, run your torch tip cleaners through it and then clean it on wood so now we check that out again I said earlier, it's like making popcorn. So now we're gonna see how clean it runs. I can live with that.
And let's see if we can yeah. knock it off. Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Sounds like something needs to be set on fire. Got some marshmallows. Yeah. That didn't work too bad. Now we have severed this connection. It's still a little warm, but look, not too many gouges. And I can easily grind this off. Right? And now it's still cut, I just cleaned up. We'll just have to clean this up so um, we don't get a lot of gas generated and oil drawn to the bottom when we weld the new one on. So we're gonna have to clean this pipe up. Um, but you can see the step landing in there. Now with uh, high pressure socket weld fittings, a lot of the time they come in with a spacer ring. It looks like kind of a, like, a little bent washer. There's not one of those in here. So we're going to have to make sure to leave a gap between the end of this pipe and the end of that fitting. The uh, reason why is because with the heat and pressure generated, um, there's expansion from this weld to the inside and if that pressure and temperature get too high and the gap isn't there then it can actually split the weld and bust your fitting apart. So always make sure on socket welds you have a gap, at least 1 16th gap. So how we're going to have to do that is we'll put it in flat make a chalk mark and then pull it out our standoff gap. Uh, so we don't care about this anymore. We're gonna swip it around and do the exact same thing to that end and then clean these up and then throw in our new fittings and weld them out.
Okay, usually after you uh, reclaim any fittings or socket weld parts or um, in this case pups that are still good, uh, however your method, whether you cut them off with a gouger or a zip disc or wash them off with a torch, before you're getting ready to put them back on after your initial grind, take a good look at it. I mean, you might make some mix along the way, but that's not a problem because you'll grind this and then weld it up anyways. But if you'll notice by this straight line here, what that is, is pre this has been previously um, salvaged before. So this is, bon this, is, this is not the first time it's been cut off. So that would be a zip cut line and then you're getting uh, slag inclusion. That's why I usually use the torch because it's good if there's slag for me because then the torch stops and I can see it clearly. But <clears throat> before you reclaim this, you have to remove all that slag and, and find out if is there anything else under here. So it's gonna be all clean metal, no matter what, what it looks like before you start again. So now that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna remove all this, inspect the piece again, and then tack it up and weld away. You can come close up. Now you'll see right in here, look at how deep I had to grind. It's all previous slag inclusion from the last time it was reclaimed. So we have to grind fairly deep. So we're going to have to be wary of that. So that is way, these are two different things, see? And it carries all the way around and look at all the rust in there. We start uh, trying to weld that with that rust and then we're going to oxidize the weld and then at that pressure it could totally, you know, we can get hydrogen cracking off of that. I mean we got embrittlement. Uh, just generally nothing you want to put, nothing you want to reuse until you fully prep. So have a good look at your salvage before you salvage it at this pressure. Now that I've finished grinding everything out to what I believe is full removal of any slag inclusions or any entrapment. So if you come closer and take a look. Okay, as you see here's the depth. So it's it's this is a one eighth rod. So you know it's quite a bit, but it's only about an eighth deep, so it's really not that bad, but You can see by the grind job here for the slag inclusions, this is obviously cut off with a zip disc. And they just went in too deep and never grounded on the first place and ended up entrapping a whole bunch of slag. So now that we have it like this, we have two options of repairing it. We can run 7018 like preheat it and run multi passes and fill it up and grind it out and then we can put it uh, to our socket weld or some people would put this into the socket weld and give it gap and could you could fill this up if you were doing it um, on a vertical, well either or, but you'd have to really be careful that you didn't do any slag entrapment. So you can go one of two ways depending how deep it is. But I suggest if you repair the pipe like this after and try to do it all in once, the best thing I think would be to take the same groove all the way around so you have uniform heat and, and everything's uniform and then you don't have to slow down or uh, drop your temperature or have your weld kind of jut out. So if you're going to do it that way, 
then probably bevel it all the way around. I think either way, actually, probably just put it to the same uh, depth either way around, and that way it's consistent. And if you're asking, what's a zip disc? What, what's that got to do with slag? Well, here's the difference. Here's a grinding disc. See? It's about a quarter inch thick. Now we do a zip disc, and they're uh, like 560 fourths thick. So, when they cut the old piece off, instead of doing what I did and cutting it with a torch, they'll, you know, grind in and they'll just cut it all the way around until they can pop that fitting off. Same thing I did, but they'll do it with a zip disc. So that's why I went in really deep. And I know it was a zip disc, is because if if you have something this thin down a quarter inch or three sixteenths and you don't transition it down, how are you going to, you know, fuse that together? Um, it actually leaves like a valley or a channel that slag just flows down. So um, that's how I know it's that way. Okay, well, I guess to simplify it is, you know, think of it this way. If you're cutting into the pipe, this is really thin and you cut in, right, and you cut deep. Right, you're not cutting through the pipe, but it's, it's dished, right? So, if you cut, if you don't grind down deep enough that your rod can touch the bottom of this valley, then you're not going to get the fusion at the bottom of the valley. Instead, you're going to get fusion up top, and the slag is just going to run down and pour down the gap. And then, I mean, your molten metal will travel over top of it. If your rod can't touch the bottom of the weld, 7018 or low hydrogen, the chances are you're going to entrap slag. So you need to, you know, give yourself some room for it to dig into it and for the slag to move, right? But if it's cut too narrow, if you're like this, oh, sorry, if you're like that, and now your rod can't get to the bottom of the valley, you're going to only go about this deep, and then you've got that void. And that's where all the slag's going to be encased. So that is why you have to get a bigger preparation. So always make sure to check what you're salvaging back on, because your weld might be stellar, but it's what someone else left behind. But it's your job to clean that up. So really make sure when you're reclaiming uh, that it's really clean. Now that we've dealt with the outside issues, before we continue any further, because now we know we're more than 50%, uh, I like 30% depth. Before we go and repair this, let's check the, what the inside of the pipe looks like, just for shits and giggles. Because if this is really heavily corroded or pitted, um, why are we trying to salvage it? It's, probably not a good idea to continue using this pipe. But if the inside of this pipe is not cavitated or, or heavily corroded, um, then with proper preparation, we can totally reuse this because the fitting and everything else looks solid. So uh, I will get my special cleaning device mm -mm. and uh, we'll give it a little buff job. And that includes just a wire attachment on an uh, air Dremel. Now these are, I think, a cheapos. So um, you got to watch how much RPM. But we actually want to use the heavy RPM because the faster this goes, these will just fling themselves out to the side, and that'll really give the inside of this a nice cleaning job without 
um, removing really any material. So we'll be able to get a good example and I can get into, you know, really I only need to know the first, you know, inch and a half or so where we're welding. If that's good, the rest of the pipe is going to be okay because most of the damage is going to happen here or at the end. So let's uh, clean it up a little bit and see if we're even going to repair this or if we have to put a new piece of uh, pipe. Before we waste any more of uh, the client's money or my time, let's see what we're looking at. See how much it goes out? When those fly off, oh, do they hurt. So. You know what, actually is a good spot, but uh, you can come take a look at it. So look at what we found. We have found some corrosion in here. Now, what this could actually be, since we cut it apart, or since it was cut apart before, this could actually be burnt mill scale, it almost looks like, because this is uh, double extra heavy seamless pipe so sometimes on the inside you get uh, some mill scale um, but you may get some corrosion underneath that so but you know what it's only down here so this is either the bottom of the pipe where maybe some moisture sat um, actually it would be the top of the pipe because this oil is is really really heavy yeah, doesn't matter. No. Yeah, this would be the bottom of the pipe. Um, so that's not bad. I don't see it anywhere else. So that really would tell me that that's probably the bottom of the pipe. So it's not throughout the whole thing, and it's really not bad. It's not. It's not really really heavy. So I think what I can do is I'll just uh, run the sanding and sanding uh, wheel in there a little bit. Shine that up, and uh, it should be fine. We'll just check it out. But once again, once it's all welded and prepped, this will go through um, probably hydro and UT before it goes into service, or UT and then hydro. So I think it looks pretty good. I'll sand it up and uh, probably weld it up. All right, if you're wondering what UT and Hydro is, uh, UT, UT is uh, short for ultrasonic or ultrasound testing, right? It's a form of non-destructive testing. So what they'll end up doing is bouncing essentially sound waves and they can see um, a consistency and depth of material as well. They'll be able to detect um, porosity or slag inclusions and that will all determine on this fitting the depth of weld or throat thickness of throat all these other factors I'm not gonna go into because I could talk for a long time um, and they'll probably do they could do a mag particle as well and what a mag particle is is they will sub they will spray a powder on like an iron, a very fine iron powder on it in a uh, um, viscous fluid so the iron powder can kind of flow in like brake fluid or just a little bit of oil and it'll flow around uh, the pipe they will clean it off uh, with a cleaner and then they subject it to current so if there's a crack in that weld the iron filings will magnetize and stand up on end. So it'll be clearly identified that up oh, there's a flaw in this weld. Somewhere in this weld there's a crack. Um, and that's really important. 
And then a hydrostatic test, because it has a high PSI, means they will fill it up with water and remove as, remove as much air as possible um, out of the pipe. Uh, and then they will pump with water or other various solutions depending on temperature or purpose of practicality but it's mostly consists of water hydro right so they will use water pressure and with um, either a pressure pump or a hand pump they will pressure test this to one and a half times working pressure so and like I said, I believe this is 5,000 pounds, but that could be to what it's tested for. Yeah, who knows. Again, this is a north, and parts and material don't come in quickly. Um, and if you've got a good threaded end, uh, why not use it? They're not cheap. Nothing, nothing's cheap up here, right? Throw it out when it's done. Otherwise, rebuild it and get back to work. This uh, one was a little more coarser, but I'm starting off with about an 80 grit, and it's a fairly snug fit, so it's not going to take a lot of meat off. So the first initial half inch, it's only looking like you know, probably not even a half a mil. So that's that's really within its acceptable limits. So I'll continue on the rest of that inch, and it's just a little spot. So I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. And then we'll go ahead and repair that because it will save the time of cutting this off. Now that I've finished cleaning the inside of this pipe, like I said, the corrosion or the rust that was sitting in there was, you know, less than half a mil. Now, that's not really the point in question. It's if you don't clean any spots or, or, or pits that are that deep, um, there's two things that can happen. Because it's a high pressure piping and it has to go through UT, um, those spots of corrosion that used to be in there um, could show up as porosity in your weld or um, incomplete penetration and be like, what? How can I do that on a, on a socket weld? And they're like, well, we don't know, but that's what we see. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're reclaiming Watch out for the pitting, and most importantly, like this part, the first half inch in the socket weld is really subject to cavitation. So if you do have any spots of pitting or corrosion in there, when you do, as a courtesy, when you put it back on, just take them out. Because if there is a spot where a fluid can become turbulent, uh, then it's got somewhere to dig out. Right? We don't want that to happen. It's this high pressure stuff, it's, I mean, it, it will happen over a course of time, but, you know, at this stage, we're repairing it. So if we can do some preventative maintenance, I mean, that's what we're here for, to say, hey, yeah, know your stuff's good for a little while, or next time, you're going to need more pipe, or this time, sorry, couldn't save that piece, I need some more, so go and get it, or vice versa, right? Because we don't want it get into all this if we don't have to and he doesn't want to pay for it if he doesn't have to. I mean we'd all like to charge him for it but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so um, if you want to take a look in there again 
And this is what I mean, right? Most importantly, you want to clean the surface or clean the inside from here to the end of your weld. See here, I got one little nick. So I know that's how high my fillet goes, but we will clean that out and this will be all new steel up to here anyways. So you should actually take that um, either Dremel or sandpaper, which work really good, and clean it up to this point because this is the weld, right? In this area, that's the area that they're going to shoot for or test for. So uh, make sure that it's all like new pipe. You don't want to have to do your job um, excellent and go, what? You're calling me on porosity when it's, no, it's just rust and they just don't look, right? So here we go. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just remove any big spots. There's a tiny little spot there. I'll, I'll dust up a little, but that's really, that's not going to cause a big hole and that's not going to show up. And then a couple of little tiny little specks, but they're not enough to um, really start a cavitation because throughout the pipe, just in normal production of it, you'll have pits that small. So that's not going to cause anything or show anything up because you'll be able to see the rest of the pipe is no different. So no cause for concern there. ready to weld this up. So I think for this repair what I'm going to do is, uh, while it's on the unit, rather than taking it off, I'm just going to even up the prep on the other side. So even though I don't see any slag inclusions or porosity or anything like that, I'm, I'm going to go to the same depth all the way around. Not only that, but for when I make the repair, um, the metallurgy is all consistent, right? We have consistent heat, consistent weld buildup, consistent material, even cooling. All these things are important on such a high pressure piece pipe. So um, we don't want to cut corners and just, oh, I'll just repair a little area. If you were to repair just a little spot, what happens is this spot is of, you know, like a different molecular structure because now you either depending on what you did before you welded it. Um, when it cools, this area is going to be a little bit harder than everything else because this area will kind of pull the heat away from it. So we want something more even than that. If, it's, if you get hard spots within this repair at that temperature and that pressure can cause a lot of problems. So we want everything to be even, hot and even, and even cooling and just want the whole thing to heat up evenly and, uh, you know, we're at a lax evenly for a better molecular structure in the pressure atmosphere. Why does everything have to run out? Now that I've got my uh, propane switched over and I can make some fire with it, we're going to preheat uh, this short little pup and uh, then we'll weld it up. And if you're wondering why I'm preheating it with a Tiger Torch versus oxyacetylene, this is because it's really important to know that oxyacetylene has a lot hotter surface temperature. So what you're going to probably end up doing is overheating the surface and not actually like pushing that heat throughout the whole uh, piece of pipe. So that's why we go to a, um, a lower temperature of flame. So it actually gets the whole structure 
to a temperature and we're not bringing it up very high. All we want to do is just, you know, get the molecules, you know, ready for the ladies, so to speak. It's party, so, I mean, everybody's got to be comfortable and warm. No one likes to do anything cold. Um, yeah, and I usually, for this, I just uh, bring it up to a temperature of a little over 100 degrees centigrade, so 212 Fahrenheit, or say 250 Fahrenheit. And really, that's just to sweat it. And then I know I'm not going to get, like, cold lap. Well, I'm not going to get cold lap, but... That's it. Let's just cook some stuff. And you might not be able to notice, but when I heat this up, it'll almost be like a shadow moves across it. You may see it, you may not. What that is, is like the moisture coming out of the metal. And that's why I heat it up to just over the boiling point, just so it kind of gets rid of that moisture and reduces the possibility of hydrogen cracking. Because we're going to fill this in with some deep hydrogen rock. So we want to make sure we, we lessen those, those chances, right? Got fresh rods out of the oven, warm steel, and then we'll be cooking. Now, probably, I'm probably only going to do one, maybe two passes. The big thing is to fill up the biggest part of this gap. This is in my weld zone. So, you know, if I fill it up, grind it off, and it's not that deep, fine. Because I'm going to be putting about a three-quarter inch fillet over top of it. So I'm not going to, the biggest thing is to fill this up completely, or we'll see how it goes. But don't try to do it one complete pass by knocking off this lag quickly. It might work out okay, but given its pressure, make sure you stop halfway or, you know, don't hot run into it. Grind your starts and stops. Then you can make absolutely sure that you're not getting slag entrapment. And you're not having to, you know, cause yourself a repair. Who needs that? So, one more pass clean it up and then uh, we'll be ready to uh, weld it on to the new socket weld fitting. Maybe I should 532. But you know what? That's alright. So I use another rod and I clean.
clean up my start and stop. You know, I don't have to worry about putting excessive current on it, but I'm keeping it nice and hot. And I don't want to put an overwhelming amount of heat. So. And if anybody's wondering, yes, for this little part, if I just would have put that on my other spinner, I can weld that up so much faster. I just don't want to take everything from here and go over there. Because once I set this up, I'm going to be inverting this table and doing it all on the horizontal. That's why we're here on this one. So. Now we're just going to grind all that off. So, take out your headphones, put in your earplugs, because it's going to get loud again. And there we go. He's all filled up, ready to tack up and start anew. It may take a little bit more time to do it this way, but at least you're you're good and theor uh, good and thorough. Thorough. Good and thorough. Hey. That's why I'm not an English teacher, I'm a welder. Um that's it. So it's ready uh, to tack up and then we'll uh, switch position and spin it out and that one we'll be ready to go. Then we gotta do the same thing to the other one. And then we'll be done. Well now that you see we finished uh, reclaiming this two inch double extra heavy pup. We've tacked it up and now I'm going to preheat it and then do my root and then the rest of my fillets. Just finished our root pass. Now we start our filling cap.
chipping hammers are. Uh, the chipping hammer is obviously for when I come around, I can knock that first bit of slag off because it's cooled off nicely. And if I start it well, then I don't have to stop. I can run right over it and there's no slag inclusions. And then I don't have to, I mean, it is always better to do two stops and starts because then you're always really sure that you have a clean start and stop. Um, but if you can make it one, make it one. Another thing you'll also know is that I'm staggering my starts and my stops. So that means I'm not starting at the same point and ending in the point throughout the whole thing. You're stepping it. So do your start and stop, you know, turn it 15 degrees and etc. Keep going around. So if there is any slag inclusions or any problems, it's not stacked up on each other where it could be a fault line so to speak so Third one, and there'll be four more, so it'll be should be seven fill passes or three, one root, three fill, four cap.
final pass, and this one's done. Now that you have seen and finished the first one, we've also finished the other side that we didn't go and film everything about uh, because that would just make this video way, 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 way too long. So this side is ready. Just got to paint the other one up and uh, get the customer to pick it up. Well, after all that, here you go. Here's the finished project. I would have taken these out and put them in the valve, but I don't have big enough vices or pipe wrenches to bust these off, so they'll have to do that. There we go. Some replacement and new fittings put on. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in hell.